studying the word of God together. Praise the name of Jesus. And we command that your bad situation will change today. No matter what situation you are in, if it's a bad situation, we command that situation to change in the name of Jesus. If you are sick and you are there, be healed in Jesus' name. If you are discouraged, be encouraged in Jesus' name. Uh, you are lacking, your house has no food. If you are in a bad situation, you're in, 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 you know, you need, uh, shout out, the Lord will supply. The Lord will meet your needs, no matter what it is. So today for our study, we are, we are going back again to chapter 15 of the Gospel of John. We've been doing the Gospel of John, and today we are back again in chapter 15. The Gospel of John, chapter 15, we said... In chapter 15, there are three, it, you can break it, chapter 15, into three. Number one, verse one to verse 11, you can break it, Christ's relationship with a believer. That is the vine and the branches. Christ's relationship and the believer. Christ's relationship with a believer. And verse 12 to 17, we said relationship of believer to believer. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Relationship of a believer to a believer. How do they relate? And then the, the third part of chapter 15 is verse 18 to 27. Relationship of believer to the world. And this may go all the way to chapter 17. The relationship of the believer to the world. How the believer relates to the world today. So that's chapter 15 broken into uh, three portions. We covered the first one, that is the believer, the relationship of the believer um, with Christ. That is the branches and the vine. So today we'll look at uh, the second part, and I'm looking at agapao love. Verse 12, verse 12, look at verse 12, verse 12 to 17. <clears throat> we may not cover all of them, but verse 12, this is my commandment, Jesus said, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. The love that is here is the agapal love, the love of God, really the love that comes from God. This is the love that Jesus talks about, a friend who lays his life down for a friend. This is, this is the love of God. The world cannot love this way. The, lo the, 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 the love of the world is give me this or I love you because of this. But this agape love uh, in, this, in this one is just, it's very, very powerful. The agape love, number one, it's Christ-like. It is Christ-like. It's the love we can, we can learn this from Christ, the way he loved. He, the Bible says he loved before. You know, we sing that song, he first loved me before I loved him. That is the love of Christ. How do you love somebody who is anti you, who is against you? How do you go ahead and love that person? That is the Christ-like love. Number two, it is sacrificial. It is sacrificial because in verse 13 it says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. A man lays his life down for his friends. You know, that's what really defeats, that's really what challenges the, the, the world today. That we can lay our lives down for others. We love them so much. I can lay down my... And Jesus said this, you know, uh, greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friend. So it is sacrificial love. Number three, agape love, or the agape love, is the personal equality Personal equality, verse 14, 
ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. You know, it is not the love or probably necessarily of a big person and a small person. This one is me and you at the same level. Ye are, uh, you know, verse 14, ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Jesus being a master, Jesus being God, Jesus being man and God, he says, you are my friends. Is ye do what I command you. Ye are my friends. I am a friend of Jesus. And Jesus is my friend. When you become a believer, my goodness, you get set apart. That, I mean, some of you might have been chasing a girl there, a boy there to be your friend. Hey, listen, Jesus becomes your friend friend. Imagine. And so you can have all there is that your friend has. You can have all that your friend has because you love each other. You, can, you love one another. So as far as, you know, equal, we are the same. I'm equal with my friend, and that is Jesus Christ. Glory, glory, glory. Number four, this agape love takes the initiative. It doesn't wait for you to begin. The agape love takes the initiative. Verse 16. Ye have not chosen me. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you and that your fruit uh, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. But just the beginning of that verse says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Do we sing that song? Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. So mine is after. Mine is after seeing he loved me so much that he died for me. He didn't say, be my friend so that I can die for you. No, he died first so that I may be his friend. Glory, glory. He took the initiative. He took the initiative. He went all the way. Oh, we sing that song all the way to Calvary. He went for me. He went for me. I was not there. I was not there, but he had in mind me. He had in mind me as he went all the way to Calvary. He went for me. I was in Golgotha, north of Jerusalem. Uh, we were shown where the, the skull, the place of the skull, there's a big, I mean, a, a big rock that looks like a skull. And below that, that's where the, 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 the the, the crosses and the one for my Savior uh, stood all the way to Calvary, coming out of, you know, and I went through some of the routes that Jesus must have gone carrying the cross, falling down and waking up, and then somebody, is it Joseph of Arimathea, coming and, you know, helping with all that, and other people all the way to Calvary, carrying my burden, carrying my sin, carrying my rebellion all the way he went he took the initiative wow and then number five on the agape love on the agape love is productive it is productive verse 16 the second part of verse 16 but let me read all of it verse 16 of john chapter 15 those of you that are just joining us right now john chapter 15 and verse 16 you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, and that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This love is productive. You know, first of all, I know a lot of you out there, you're looking for men's ordination. 
Oh my goodness, you're looking for the church to ordain you. And some of you, when the church delays to ordain you, you leave and you go somewhere else where they recognize you. Let me tell you, Jesus says he has called you and ordained you to be his. You are his. You are set apart to be his. He has uh, done that work. And what, since he has done that work, he has also ordained you to go forth and bear fruit. And that fruit ye bear, that fruit will remain, will endure will go through challenges and many, many things. They will challenge that fruit, but that fruit will remain. Oh, my goodness. Oh, over the years, as I've led many people to the Lord, once in a while, somebody will walk up to me and tell me, do you remember such and such a meeting? And some people will even tell me the message 20 years ago, 25, 30, 50, even 50. They are telling me, do you remember? It was the 1970s. Do you remember when you came in my little church and you preached and you said this? Those days I could only preach one word. One word and that was, and he, that word would, would stick and transform. And then years later somebody meets me excited. Excited you led me to the Lord. Excited that you prayed for me. Excited that you preached to me. That fruit will remain. Some of you that are beginning ministry these days, and you wonder whether anybody notices, you don't care. Don't care, they'll come back. Throw your bread upon the waters, and ye shall find it after many days. You don't preach so that people will come and reward you. You don't preach so that people will come and pat your shoulder or your back and tell you, nice, you know, nicely done. Oh, sometimes you may preach, you know, well, I remember being in the teacher training college and we had teachers come, tutors to come to assess, especially the final one, and they would assess and, you know, make notes at the bottom. And I'll never forget one Christian, one tutor did not like one of the Christian ladies. And he went to, 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 he went to assess her and he was seated in the class. And after the class, he wrote down there, you have you have taught nothing. And the nothing you have taught, you have taught it badly. You know, sometimes even in church, <laughs> and somebody come up to me and tell me, be sure you preached a very wicked message. I thought, wicked? Where did the wicked come? You know, this is the young people and their language. This is the way they speak. Wicked, he meant the opposite good, you know. You preached a very powerful message. And they call it you wicked. My goodness. You, you threw me off balance right away when you said wicked message. You know? <laughs> and then they'll call you maze. Oh, maze, oh, maze. Oh, my word. Maze, you did. And I'm there thinking, wow. You know, people might not appreciate what you do, what you, what you say, or what you preach. But let me tell you, there's a sower that went to sow and some seeds fell by the wayside. Others fell by the thorns and others fell by the rocks, Jesus said. But there's some that fell on rich soil. As you reach out, as you spread, you know, the, the, the seeds, there's some. There's some that will reach, that will fall on the rich soil. It will transform a family. It will transform a drunkard. It will transform a drug addict. It will transform a young man who has no future, no destiny. It will transform. So young preachers, don't get discouraged. Preach it on until it brings, it brings. You know, the Bible talks about um, the, the blessed are the feet of them that take the good news. And they'll come back rejoicing, bearing, oh my, that moment is coming for you that moment. So that agapao love is productive. If we love the world, we will share with the world. We will share our love with the world. We will share whatever we have with the world. And the fruit we bring up, it will be fruit that will remain. Hallelujah. Now, let me jump quickly and look at the third part about the believer and the world. 
We were looking at the believer and the believer. And maybe, maybe I should have said a few things here about the believer. The believer loves one another. The believer cares for one another. You know why there is in church when somebody hears another believer scandling or speaking evil, speaking things that you're not sure of about, about me and I hear, it hurts so much and you wonder how, you know, you are there wondering, you know why it hurts so much? Because that believer is supposed to love, is supposed to correct with love, is supposed to, you know, I, I saw a picture yesterday and I think I had seen it on the, on, on, on the media of a chicken, of a chicken that was dead. And the little ones, the little chicks were climbing, some were sleeping on the dead mother and others were playing around. Unaware that the mother is dead. Either somebody killed the, the chicken and then the little ones were just all over. And somebody wrote down there, before or as you, as you kill somebody with your words, remember, there are so many people who depend on that person. Remember, there are so many people who depend on that person. And I have to think about those chicks who really don't know mother is dead. And then it comes at night. When darkness sets in, it's when they realize Mother is not waking up. Mother is dead. And baby, mother was killed by someone who didn't care, who didn't think. Our words in church sometimes kill. Our words in church, when we don't show love, our words kill. Our words destroy. What happens with the little chicks over the days that are coming? No mother to provide, no mother to protect, no mother to care. And maybe they all disappear. They get picked up by eagles. They get picked up by birds. Even the dogs help themselves because mother is not there. Mother is not there. Hmm. In church, we're supposed to love one another. In church, we're supposed to love one another. The, 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 don't we sing, they will know that we are Christians by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. We have, and in our church, we had a preaching on the, see, the church of Ephesus, or just the churches where the church was admonished, you're doing good, you're doing A, B, C, D, but somewhere you have lost your first love. The way you love prayer, the way you love the believers, the way you serve, the way you ministered, somewhere you have lost, you have lost your first love. Okay, let's go to the third part of chapter 15 and then finish. Let's, you know, the, the, the believer and the world. Verse 18. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. That's one fact you need to know. That the world, the world would hate me because it hate, it first hated the the Savior Jesus Christ. I'm watching the Jesus the Jesus film. I'm just I'm there sitting and wondering. Jesus healed. They have testimonies. They can see. They can see people that Jesus healed. He fed them when they were hungry. He did. He's not never done anything wrong, and yet. They plan to terminate it. They plan to kill here. And this is coming from the religious people who want to finish Jesus. After all the good things he has done, they want to kill him. So they hated him before they hated me. So if the world hates me, if the world hates me, I'm not the first one. They hated the Savior who did so well and Man, I, I can't even do a, a fraction of the good that Jesus does or Jesus did to the world. I can't. So if they hated Jesus with all that good, how about me? How about me? Because sometimes you slap me out there in the world and I just want to revenge. I'm not supposed to, but I want to revenge. So I, I, I can't wear the shoes that Jesus was wearing, the good that he was doing out there. 
if they hated him, how about me? I was shocked one time. I stood, you know, I was I had this new car and I was very happy. And no one stopped. So one of my members and I stopped to give a lift. And that member said, No, I can't come in. I want I don't want I don't want to join you in eating God's money or church's money. What? And this is one of my members. Uh, you can imagine from there when I drop off the feelings and the discouragements. Is this the way people look at me? Huh? I'm just there eating their money. What is it if it is your money? Why don't you keep it at home? Don't bring it to the church. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> keep it at home if it is yours and you've been eating our money the money you bring it here actually we don't throw it up and let it fall and God eats it I end up by eating some of it to be honest but you know in, a, in the right way to support me to do the ministry that I am doing and you know lately we've had people speak all kinds of things about church and about the money they give to the church. Oh, my, 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 my. If you listen to some of the things that people say, you will even stop giving. Don't listen. And if you listen, don't do what they are suggesting. Because they, they hated Jesus, they're going to hate us. They're going to hate me. So me, in a town like this one, I thought everybody loves me. Because I do good. I'm a preacher. I've led, you know, the family of... We have testimonies of families that were dying in sin in young people in alcoholism and drugs and I led them to the Lord and they, clean, they cleaned up they, their destiny was changed and I thought man the town when they come out they should be clapping they should be clapping oh that is the man Wapi. they have so many things against me they have so many things against me because they hated the savior who did so good, they will hate me. So I just want you to know, the world will hate you. Now, if you are of the world, now this is interesting. If you are of the world, verse, verse 19. If you are of the world, the world would love its own. Interesting. So if the world would love its own, how about we the believers, we should love our own. Come on now. We should love our own. If the world loves its own. Yet because you are not of the world. But I chose you out of the world. I by the terrible that I chose you. I am chosen. I was one of them. I was destined. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. It's getting exciting. It's getting exciting. So uh, the world is hostile to the Christians because, number one, the world is hostile to the Christians because, number one, different nature. Different nature. That's number one. Different nature. We are different. Verse 19. It says, if we were of the world, I'm not of the world. I'm of a different nature. Mm. The world is hostile to me because of a different nature. I'm of a different nature. Number two, Christians' association with the resurrected Christ. Christians' association with the savior of the world. Christians association with the savior. Then they are hostile to me. The world is hostile to me. Verse, I mean number three. We're talking about the world is hostile to the Christian because. Number three. And this is in verse 22 to 25. I can continue from verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. Remember the word that I said unto you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. 
If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. 21. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake. Kumbe. Kumbe inafanyika kwangu because of his sake. Because of his name. Because they do not know him who sent me. 22. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. 23. He who hates me hates my father also. 24. If I had not done among them the works which, I, which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. No, no. Ile mambo tunafanya the things that Jesus did and we are doing, they convict them. They feel bad. They prick them. They trouble them. Huh? Their conscience are bothered. Huh? Because they are not in a life. If Jesus had not done so, has not come, had not done these things and had not preached and you know all that, they will be all right. They will be all right. But now, it's because Jesus came, did these things, and they hated him, they hated the Father, and we are also hated. So we convict them. You know, when you are hanging around a, a sinner, when you are hanging around an unbeliever, there are still things, they have issues. They, they, they are very uncomfortable down there. If they can tell you. Next to the church here was a bar. Next to the church here, when we came into this compound, there was a bar, a very popular bar down here, just along our fence. Uh, and, uh, you know, guys out uh, after work, they will end up there drinking, five, you know, 5.30, 6 o'clock. One day, we began to, pr I mean, we would come for prayers from Monday to, you know, to the whole week we are here praying in the evening. So, Kumbe, these guys, when they come from work, they come to drink there. And when they, all of a sudden we start to pray, little did I know those guys would be so troubled by the praying. One day I met a friend of mine who used to work in the bank. I met him in another forum somewhere and he said, Bishop, let me tell you something that you don't know. Now I don't drink. He wasn't drinking. But you know, I quit drinking near the church. I used to come them, you know, and you know, we ourselves didn't know, but we were praying for that club to close. You know? Why should we exist next to each other? To bring for it to close. So this guy, tall, handsome man, he told me, Bishop, you know, the problem, I would come back, I would come from work real thirsty for a bottle. I will come and sit down and, uh, you know, it is poured on, 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 the, on the glass. And I want to begin, you know, enjoying myself. And all of a sudden, you start your prayers. And that would bother me. That would really torture me as I, I never enjoyed it. So I did that for a while and I had to quit. I just quit going into that bar. And others quit and quit and quit until the bar was closed. We could not exist together next to each other, the church and the bar. Either the church closes down or the bar closes down. Those guys were, guys were convicted. We are here praying and we are praying out loud and we are praying for them. Why? They reached a point the bar closed because there were no customers. <laughs> so we convict. They get convicted of their waywardness and of their sins. Because of our presence and because of who we are. Because we are the children of God. We are the selected, the chosen, the appointed, the anointed children of God that we should bring light into the world. I've just read in my notes here, and maybe that this will come up in our, in, our, in our next studies, that God the Father plans. God the Father plans. God the Son provides. God the Holy Spirit applies. 
He applies. Did you hear that? God the Father will plan, plans. God the Son will provide. The Holy Spirit will apply. The application here, my, yay, yay, yay. The application, the application. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm going to be talking, you're going to be talking about revelation. 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 Holy le revelation. Divine revelation. God revealing himself. First of all, we're going to learn about the revelation of who God is and his son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And as we learn about that, how does God reveal things to his children, to us? How does he reveal himself? So, it, it's, it's, it's exciting that here in this chapter, the Holy Spirit will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, the Holy Spirit. Wow. I have no time to go into that because time is gone. It's been a wonderful time sharing from this chapter 15 of the Gospel of John. Gospel of John is not a narrative only, but it's selective. It's very selective on who, so that all the things he selects will read to one thing, that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And that by believing in him, chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, these and many other signs did Jesus do in the midst of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing, ye might have life in his name. Life Zoe, the eternal life, the life of God Zoe, that ye may have Zoe, eternal life. John is very selective. Very selective, the miracles, the teachings is so selective so that these as he selects may help you to believe that surely he is the Christ. He is the Christ, the son of the living God, that by believing you may have life eternal. This is the one John says and, I, and we saw him and we beheld his glory, the glory of the most begotten of the father. We spill, we saw him. And in one place, chapter one, he says, you know, the second day he saw, he see Jesus, he said, behold, behold. He saw him, he saw him, he saw him. That's why we are studying the revelation in this church. We're doing revelation. The seven churches. And as we did that, we were reminded, we were told, John the writer, Actually, when you look at the disciples of Jesus and even that movie I'm talking about, the John and James are very young. They are very young. Because John writes Revelation all the way in the 90s. 90 A.D. They say it was written somewhere around 96 A.D. Many of the other disciples, the older ones like, like Peter and, and, and others had passed on. But John lived on, and we are told in studying here that they could not kill John. They put him on boiling pot of oil, and they could not kill him. He could not die. And so they banished him at the island of Patmos. And while at the island of Patmos, that's why the Bible says, I was, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I saw and I wrote. The revelations are in Revelation. Great, great. That is for another day. May the Lord richly bless you and, you know, really build you. These teachings are meant to build you up as a believer. To know where you stand and who you were in God. And that you are made to make a difference in this world. If you're not born again, I want to pray with you. If you're not saved, I want to pray with you. If you have a guilt, a sin that is troubling you, you want to be forgiven, freed, I want to pray with you right now as I close this service, wherever you are. 
Heavenly Father, I want to pray for that man. I want to pray for that woman. I want to pray for that youth, Lord. Reach out to them, Father. I pray that you will forgive. Forgive, Lord, and clear that guilt. Those that, Lord, are raising up their hands to receive you, I pray that you write their names in the Lamb's book of life. I pray that they will enjoy walking in newness of life as new creatures. Save them, Lord. Forgive them, Lord. Make them yours from this day. Thank you, Lord, for saving them. Thank you, Lord, that they can now belong and they can go in your name and they, to love one another and to love the world as you've loved them. Thank you, Lord. And I pray for those that are burdens right now. I pray that you will lift those burdens. I pray for those that are sick that you will heal them, Lord. Heal them and deliver them, Lord, uh, from the bondages that the enemy wants to bring around them. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.